A very good afternoon to you all and a warm welcome to the virtual masterclass series presented by the Yongsu To Conservatory of Music. Today's session is the latest of the many hundreds of masterclasses that the conservatory has held for its students and the wider music community over the past 17 years. Through these masterclasses, our students are given the invaluable opportunity to learn from some of the world's finest musicians. In recent years, these visiting artists have included Gautier Capuchon, Andra Schiff and Masaki Suzuki. The Conservatory is glad to continue its tradition of presenting its Masterclass series despite the challenges of the ongoing pandemic. Today, we are able to do this virtually and we are greatly privileged to have Laszlo Fenyo with us to work with our cello students. Hailed as one of the world's most exciting artists today, Professor Fenyo has performed on renowned stages throughout the world, including the Concert Gebouw in Amsterdam, Wigmore Hall in London, and the Gasteig in Munich. He has performed as a soloist with orchestras like the Singapore Symphony Orchestra, the Frankfurt Radio Symphony Orchestra, the Beethoven Orchestra Bonn, and the Staatskapelle Weimar. He is a recipient of the highly coveted Franz Liszt Prize, awarded by the Hungarian Ministry of Culture. He was the principal cellist of the Philharmonia Hungarica from 1998 to 2001 and the Frankfurt Radio Symphony from 2001 to 2012. He was a lecturer at the Academy of Music and Fine Arts in the Frankfurt from 2009 until 2011 and is currently a professor at the University of Music Karlsruhe. Good afternoon, Professor Fenyer. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning here for us in, uh, in Germany, in Europe. I am absolutely pleased and very, very happy to be part of uh, your Masterclass series and uh, many, many, many greetings to everybody who is watching. Thank you for being, being here with us today. Professor Fenyer will be working with fourth year students from the YST Cello Studio. Today's performers will be accompanied on the piano by Miss Lucia, who is lecturer of chamber music and collaborative piano at the conservatory. To begin our session today, we have fourth year student Yoon Jae Woon, who will be playing the first movement of Chopin's cello sonata in G minor, opus 65, the Allegro Moderato.
Yeah, bravo, bravo. <clears throat> can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yes, you can hear me. Bravo, absolutely fantastic. Fantastic playing, very nice. And uh, I am really amazed by the technology of, uh, of this, this quality. Uh, all this pandemic time when, when I was teaching uh, online, it was always some kind of big problem and the picture and sound is not together and I cannot hear colors, I cannot hear dynamics. And now it's just really like life. So absolutely congratulations also to the, to the technological side of, 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 the, of the, your university. And fantastic playing. Just, just a few basic things. Um, let's, let's clear about the sonata. It's very interesting that it's written Allegro Moderato. <clears throat> This Allegro Moderato, I think, in this sonata is very important for the beginning. And you do a little tempo changes later, going a little bit faster sometimes, going a little bit less uh, tempo, a little slower. But, but basically, you have, to, you have to try to find one basic Allegro Moderato walk, a tempo which gives you the directions in each phrase. Because now you play a very good intonation, very good sound, um, <clears throat> it's also uh, together with the piano, so chamber music is also fine, basically. But I don't really have the feeling that it's something starts and goes until a certain moment, one phrase, and then a new phrase begins. So with clear words, I would suggest you to start one more time and be very careful that when you start your first entrance, <laughs> this belongs to the piano part, to the beginning. So even with, with the physiological move, what you do, don't really start the movement here like an actor. Be sneaking into the, into the piano part, although of course it's forte, eh? so I think it's forte. forte. You have to be very strong, but don't, don't, don't start this beginning with any kind of really accent or, uh, or like new beginning. This is the closing word of the piano introduction actually and when you are ready with this then wait a little longer and then start the line which goes far far away continue 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 until we will see, but it's very, very, very long. Actually, <clears throat> actually, the real movement of the cello starts in bar 24. Yeah? Until there, it, you should breathe, of course, but feel that this is one huge, 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 huge line. Yeah? Let, let's do this one more time. We don't need, actually, the, the full piano beginning, maybe... Uh, Two, three bars before. Four. Very good. Yes, yes. Uh, but, 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 I'm sorry. One, 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 one thing. One thing. If you play it so slowly, after the very, very fast notes, then the movement is already getting into some kind of adagio. You should not get to a slow movement. So you get a taka 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 Wait here. Wait on the long note with the fermata. Not this is a little bit too 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 slow. Yeah, one more time. Very good, very nice, 
very nice, very nice, very beautiful. So the last moment in this in this line, in this very, very long phrase, is actually your um, this note. This should be continued. And from here begins the new music. Of course, this is an upbeat. And then begins the, the, the real story. Until here, we were just like in the movie, we see that who is going to play the movie, what is going to be a little bit the story of the movie, yeah. But but it's not really the the, the story. I just want one one more thing about the about the beginning. Um, still, if you can, I mean, the dolce is beautiful how you do, but um, this continuation here. Is very important that you don't close the arm and then start new. Yeah? Try, try also to follow a little bit more. You try this. See. No, the 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 the, the third beat in the bar. This one. You go on holiday. You 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 enjoy it a little bit too much. This day. Feel that that it goes on to the open string. Day. Ah, you play the next open. You play the next next uh, um, D open string. I see. Um, if you do this, it's also fine. But then do a little bit of bow vibrato, then open D string. You know, there's like a little move in the bow. Yes, 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 yes. Try, try this. Beautiful. Okay, and one last one, one, one other thing about just basically this in this whole movement. I thought many times that if you could make different variations of, of your vibrato, it would be very very helpful. And actually, this is exactly what we were just doing. That you play. You didn't vibrate too much, which was fantastic. It's an upbeat. An upbeat should never be over vibrating. But the downbeat, the next D, that should have some vibrato. And the same if you go on. This is also kind of like, like air is inhaling. If you inhale, then you don't vibrate. Inhale and outhale. The same here. Upbeats should 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 not be the same vibrato than the than the downbeats. And so, so abbo and downbo. That's right? The same here, the same here. Can you do the same here? Just from Gigi. Very good, very good.
very good. Just two, two little things. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, there is a rule about dotted rhythm. The dotted rhythm, for example, the very first entrance of your cello part. Yeah? <clears throat> so you have a long note and coming a short note. And this is always written together all the time. But here, for example, where we just started, you had a lot. This is not this triplet. Now again. In the dotted rhythm, the little note should all the time belong to the next note, to the following note. Not tam pa 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 pa, but yam pa 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 pa. It doesn't matter if the next is a triplet or another. And of course, in different kind of music, it's a little bit always different. But it would be very very helpful. <clears throat> um, but actually, I can tell you which was the most which I was missing. Uh, your dotted rhythm is. Uh... <laughs> This was a little more, yeah. So this, if you if you understand the dotted rhythm in this way, that the little note little note goes on to the next note, then you're flowing floating. It, the, the music will be much 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 easier. Also after, uh, yeah. For example, this one. If you after this last dotted rhythm go a little bit back dynamically. And then make a crescendo. That's also very helpful. And then be very, very, very exact with this. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Uh, it could be more, more crispy. Yeah. Please let's start one more time from. Uh, where, where is this bar? Um, Thirty-four with a beat. Yeah? Beautiful. Here at the very end, wait until the piano is ready with this resolution, and then you start your cadenza. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't step on the feet of, of the piano. Your cadenza is an extra, extra story. You know, before I told you so many things about the dotted rhythm, about the, the, the dynamic articulation, it's so difficult that I, I don't know how often I can interrupt you playing, how not. But please, maybe when we are ready, you, you remember everything. Now, let, let's go now on to the second theme, um, to the develop, kind of development. But, um, uh, <clears throat> no, I tell you after. Let's go on now. Let's go. <laughs> we have a few more minutes. Yeah, let's go. Second theme.
Okay, let's let's stay a little bit in, in this in these four bars. Again, um, the the vibrato. It's very important when when the piano is ready with these few bars. You can don't start it as a as a new uh, movement. This is just um, just an echo kind of, of 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 the piano. So come in with a very careful, beautiful vibrato, and the two notes now don't over vibrate. Mm -hmm. Wait until the piano comes in with the next harmony, and it's a resolution. You should not actually you should not change fingering between if F and E flat. This should be together. And the new music starts on the F sharp. Can you can you try this? And I know that in every edition it's a it is an upbow. If you play it, try to make it sound as it would be legato. Actually, I don't play upbow. If you if you try once this bowing, why not? With the piano, let, let's hear the harmonies together with the piano. But the slide, the slide. Um, so of course it's a, if you do third finger, maybe second, one. And when you slide here up to the E flat, um, be careful that your bow is not standing while you are sliding. The bow is not standing on the string. Otherwise we hear a glissando. You hear a little, you see a little kind of move in the bow. One more time. point you stop in this bar in these two bars you stop three times musically I mean yeah be careful that the go this the beginning of bar uh, 85 should have a little bit of time but not too much before yeah that's because you make a huge huge development all the time to to, to and um, and uh, important that uh, yeah yum ba 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 that moment is is where you should have a little bit of time. And one other thing I would I would like to 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 tell you what what you can maybe check and and um, and work on is that the bow speed, the using the bow mostly you use for any kind of color any kind of dynamic the full bow i sh i show you the um, i show you the um, the example what i what i what i mean for example he, he, ah, hold on my music is next but I, I i manage now so when you had for example um here you go until the end of the bow can you see my, my bow in the camera? Yeah. 
and, and then from here you have to come back to the frog, which is in this moment fine. But now you go again until the end of the move, and now you come back again. It would be better if sometimes the dumbbells don't go until the end of the move, just until the middle. For example. And here he writes a crescendo. But the crescendo should not be, um, in this case, something which is louder. It be something which is with more smile. After this... <laughs> Also, this F, you play the full bow. Yeah, be careful. Continue. Okay, so again, that was maybe three or four different things, but um, let, 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 let's do it one more time. Maybe when you start this, uh, this G also, don't close it down. Piano is going on. Yeah, from here, please. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, just to, uh, one, one little spot here. Um. So, and now here, from this easy place, the cello sounds very easy on the A string. Yes, you can do whatever you want, it sounds good. But when you come down to the D string, G string, work a little bit more, more articulation that, that um, well, maybe this is the technology. That maybe you, maybe it sounds absolutely perfect and clear and art, uh, articulated, but I can imagine that it could be a little bit more worked on the G string, on the C string to get clear sound. And the same going backwards we need. After... Here, play a little bit shorter bows that the articulation, the clearness of the C string, G string is coming on. But when you go here... And when you go up on the A string, don't force the sound. Don't force too much. The A string is easier. Doesn't matter if crescendo or not. Can you do from... Here we have five minutes left. We have five minutes of time left.
okay. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, do you know exactly where to entrance after the piano session? The piano solo? With the... Um, I, I have some... Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a little bit of feeling that you don't really exactly know how many notes the piano should, should play. You want it and then you knew there is one more. No, no problem. No, just, just check, check in the part because, again, the physiological continuation, what she does, is important that you are not, not doing some kind of sudden entrance. Yeah? You have to be part of the piano. And then when you... This is still... Until here. And then continue with the new energy. Dotted rhythm should have a little bit of time. Yeah? Let's do a half bar before cello entrance. a little bit the bow. It's, it's, it's again the... You have a full bow for this little note. Okay, this is how it's written. This is what happens. But be careful that the sound stays exactly the same fantastic quality what you play before. Yeah. But actually you don't need the full bow for this first one. Yeah. Time. Let's do this. Let let's do this one more time, and I think then we we also must unfortunately already finish. Don't forget here what I told you about the dotted rhythm. Yeah? Not, don't give an accent to the don't beat. The, direction, direction in the music. Yes! Vibrato? Do vibrato? Beats. Don't don't over vibrate the upbeat. Beautiful. Okay. Do you have? Do you do you have one more spot, one more place, one more question about about the about the movement or any? Basic question. I think it's fine. <laughs> fine? Okay, okay, okay. So, great playing, fantastic. It was great to see you and hope to see you maybe one day present without this and without yeah. the screen. Thank bravo, you. bravo, 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 bravo. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Look at you. Thank you, Professor Fenyu. And thank you, J1. We now move to our next performer, fourth year student Yang Shunming. He will present the first movement of Schumann's Cello Concerto in A minor, Opus 129.
Fantastic playing, fantastic. How old are you? Sorry? How old are you? Uh, I'm 21. 21, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, studying with Li Wei? Yes. Professor Kin, yeah. How many years already? Uh, four years. Four years, I could tell, I can tell. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> okay, let's have, let's have a little bit, little bit of look of, of, of uh, you know, you know the, the, the um, a little bit. You know about the, how to say it uh, kindly. The the medical condition of Robert Schumann. Yeah. Do you do you know a little bit of of, of his life? What kind of person he was? Uh, 
what kind of troubles he was in, uh, family troubles, relation troubles, all this kind of history you, you know a little bit about? Yeah. But yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, possible to talk about and it's very important to know about. And I think if we know, know about <clears throat> some things of uh, uh, money, who is calling me? No problem. No, no, not interesting. Then, then we would maybe go a little bit in this concerto less from aggressivity. But I, maybe you are not playing aggressive. I, maybe it's the video, maybe it's the sound, I don't know. But I think it's much, much more important to understand the sforzatos, fortepianos, in a way of coming from our heart, coming from our soul. And it's not kind of physical punch. Immediately beginning. This D sharp. This D sharp should be some kind of airy, a lot of air in this forzato, not a press or, or, or some kind of classical sforzato in the bow. It's more left hand. The vibrato should be suddenly more fast, intense, with a fast bow. Yeah, but no. This, is, this was a little bit immediately here too much, and later we can have, of course, uh, differences, but um, it's important that it's a very intimate, very broken-hearted person wrote this music, not somebody who is angry. He was not angry, he was already just broken. You understand? It's a case for uh, some doctors, but uh, not for us, but we should <laughs> try to understand that. Okay, let's let's start one more time, please. Much better, much, mm. much better, much better. Just uh, fantastic, much better. Just be careful that the note before the sforzato, if you if you prepare the sforzato so much, mm. the, the technique of the sforzato was lovely. But if you um, if this note before is just really dead, th then it will be still too much. Yeah, so vibrato. Also in, that's a normal E. It's a little bit more vibrato, a bit more air. This is important. The other thing is, you start down bow, yeah? And then go up. Oh, actually, me too. But try not to start the piece at the frog. You don't need the full bow for the first note. Start it in the middle and make a development in this note. And also in... A different please try 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 to use the different vibrato when you start this note the very first moment should not be vibrato vibrato comes a, a little bit later and then to the C don't make too much crescendo in the bow it's only crescendo in left hand try this please
Okay, until here, until here, this should be actually one huge line, and of course, the music goes still on. It would be also very important for the beginning that through this, what you did fantastic, the vibrato developing, developing, go on. It should be when a singer comes on stage, starts to sing with one air, is not bre not breathing in between. So it's important after the this moment. Don't play diminuendo so much. Continue. more acupuncture. Do you say acupuncture? You understand this um, this technology with the needle? Tick, tick, tick. It's a medical technology in Asia. I use this word for little accent. Little soft accent. Yeah, it's not a not a big needle. It's just a ting. And then be careful that it's one line. One line until this. Doesn't matter what going you play. The fingering should not be a technical problem, it's not a technical problem. And then continue. Here you have a little bit of time. New singer is coming. Be careful that this D is not too short. It was a little hectic. See, a little more. the ball one line vibrato on the D it was many many things now many things I, I tried to tell you but you you will remember yeah. let's do one more time beginning let's do beginning such a great music, my right, God. Very good, fantastic. Ma many things you, you, very good. Many, many things you did immediately, immediately, little kind of changes. And, um, you know, it's very difficult to, 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 to say some things to, to somebody who is so secure on the cello, so secure in the music, so absolutely have the imagination of this piece. But um, this is the great thing about music. Music is not mathematic. In mathematics, two and two is always four. In the music, two and two can be one plus three. Also in the mathematics, of course. But I mean, the, the, the freedom of the phrasing, the freedom of the timing and everything, and the understanding of some kind of uh, indications, for example, like these forzatos in Schumann. It's very important to see them not just from one side, but to see them from all other sides and also different lights and different... You understand that the colors are always different. 
one Boeing, one Boeing you should really think about because you play different Boeings like me, but this is, doesn't matter. But this. Um, um, <laughs> That would be this one moment would be I think helpful to to make it different, and then we go on. Be careful that here you don't play just simple notes. Here suddenly you you stopped playing music. You started to play a little bit like an etude. Yeah, enjoy the harmonies and direction. And now we have very important three notes up which comes later million times in this piece. Yeah. Make it make it more like a, like a cadenza which which is growing. Here you can start to be a little bit first time in the piece could be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more accents. Yeah, and then when you go on, I tell you some things because it's difficult online to stop. Uh, when you go in the scale, be careful when you go to the next string. There is always a little bit of unclearness. The articulation is not so perfect when when uh, I hear it when, when you go to the next next string. <laughs> vibrato to this note. Don't leave this note without vibrato. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe start the second start here uh, when you have the very long uh, the, the up bone. Middle of the bar. Four one two. Much much better. Just one, one, one little technical, one little technical thing again to the scale. Now you were very exact and very clear when to go to the next trick. But when you have fast moves in the legato, don't don't force dynamic because it's not helping the articulation. And at the end, doesn't matter in what kind of acoustic you play, articulation is dynamic. If something is articulated and the audience understands every note, it doesn't need to be loud. You understand? So in this case here, start this note loud, but then the, the beginning of the scale doesn't need to be fortissimo. Just very articulated left hand and very exact in the bow. Yeah. Uh, let's let's do from here. And when you go, on, be careful. It's a little bit flat. You have. Okay. It could be a little bit higher, and then don't rush. Don't rush, but also don't stop. Now you were a little bit in in hectic, hectic way, yeah. Just the first. So here, 
mm. in this little in this in this little cadenza uh, we can we can see it very very clearly this three upbeat system what Schumann loves in many different pieces but in the cello concerto all the time look yam pam pam you finish the orchestra tutti with this D and then after this note you start something new so don't hold the Count the notes. Three beats to the G sharp. The G sharp is an incredibly beautiful and important first note of a resolution. Finished. And now you have three beats to the second theme. The second theme. So basically, it should be cadenza with three parts. Finished. First part. And then tempo. Can you try like this? Yum, pam, pam. vibrato don't stop the vibrato it was beautiful i think it's fantastic when you when you try also to play with colors a little bit what kind of color is the first one it's a dark color and from here a lighter color with more smile with a, not too much vibrato but with more bow speed these three notes and then vibrato Almost every note. Three upbeats. It's I know it's another Boeing what you play, but um doesn't matter. Let, let's try it like this. One more time. Very nice, very nice. Do you know, do you know, I, I, I mentioned before, do you know what is a resolution? The combination of two notes. Oh. In, in German it's four hat auflösung, but in English a resolution. Oh. Yeah? For example, your last two notes. <laughs> yeah, the first is has, first has tension, the second is relaxed. This is basically the idea of a resolution. And here the last is, a, is another story because here you need to play a crescendo give the music to the orchestra but before you have million resolutions which you should make it all somehow different but everything uh, all should be um, realizable for example the g sharp goes to the e natural this is a resolution and the next is c go to the d natural and all all of them should have a different vibrato yeah, or um, also this one. Now we have two. No one. Also here. And to make it separately, Boeing is not not very lucky. This. Uh, maybe maybe we can you can think about it. We leave it to make it here. I think the original is two and two. Yeah. Doesn't matter. When you go on, this is also a resolution. To make it separate is possible, but don't accent the second note. Continue the resolution. Resolution. Yeah. I, 
exaggerate now the time of the resolution. It's not so long, but we need to understand that, that this is, this is there, they are there, not just yeah? Do one more time, please, from first one. Which is the most which is the most important which is the most important note after this? G G sharp A? Uh, G sharp. Exactly. Exactly. So make the vibrato difference on the G sharp, the bow speed difference, and even you can make the, the amount of meat of the finger what you put to the cello. So the first note, the first G can be a finger, I don't know if you see, is not too flat. It's normal. But the G sharp should be more flat, and also through this the vibrato will be different. Yeah. Do you, do you have here a crescendo? Yeah, that arm bam, to the C. Is a crescendo written in the music? Mm, no, there's no crescendo. No, 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 no. I know this is kind of a tradition to, to make it very heroic and very big, but actually back to my first, um, um, what I told you, if, if you know how Sch that Schumann was broken and crazy, yes, but, but not, not that kind of crazy guy who takes the the chair and smashes into the audience. He was another way crazy. So, three mm, full. Uh, sorry, sorry, the other place. Uh, how, how, how do we get to this? Um... Uh -huh. Actually, it goes down in dynamic. Yeah? And then. There comes something from the soul, some kind of, but it's not really screaming, it's just inner, just from the soul. Oh, I, I feel so bad. And here we speak out and we tell the whole world that we are not happy. Yeah, but only at the C. The B flat is still another. Prof, we have about five minutes of time left. And, and okay, let's 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 uh, go combine this place with. Uh, it's also I think it's a little bit too uh, too jumpy. You know? Somehow make it nicer. Don't, don't need to pull the ball. And don't stop, don't stop the, don't stop, don't stay on the long note without the imagination to go on. You understand what I want to say? You can stay on any note very long if you, if you show that you will go on. But now you do something like... We don't know what will happen. We need to understand... Sorry. Same 
that the 16th coming in um, you should show a little bit that of course Schumann was also a big fan of Johann Sebastian Bach which means when Bach wrote this music that it's never it's never uh, the accent or the heaviness is never on the first note the first note is mostly light and start from the second note yeah <laughs> something like this, yeah? Um, but it's not so important, actually. Then go on, when you... To make this bar a little bit more in time, yeah. you know? And, and why? Because you took before this place many, many, many bars as a cadenza. For example... <laughs> You, you wait many, many times, which I like, but at the end, when suddenly the music starts, it will be some kind of rhythmical shape. Then again comes the last bar, which is the arriving to the next big arrival. There again to make it, again make it longer, again make it longer, is a little bit too much, uh, too much individual waiting. You, you, you understand. So basically, Schumann wrote uh, rhythm, and uh, to wait too often is not, not helping the, the direction in the music. Yeah? Think about this. And uh, we have just a few more minutes. I understood um, what, was in the, what was in the second in the development. Or we can actually do it if you have one more place in the piece or one more basic question then ask, please. Because to go, to go on now is, uh, doesn't make any sense. We have no time. Wait, wait, um, <coughs> wait, wait a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Question. Mm, not, not really. No, no, not really like that. Uh -huh. um, what I liked very much was uh, how, 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 you, how you went from one hill note here to the other. But be careful that you don't make an extra accent in the long note. You, you hit somehow in the middle where the orchestra comes in. No, play crescendo before. Same here. No accent, just crescendo. That's that, 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 that's important, and uh, <laughs> now that was another place. Uh, I know, but it's again a little bit what I told you in the beginning about don't get too loud, too much real accent, too aggressive in the in the piece. Is this? Uh, <laughs> Think about a brass ensemble where they play like this, not real accents, just grandioso, and and not too much crescendo. And that was beautiful after this. That place was absolutely gorgeous. Maybe you can you can play a little bit less accents here. 
it should be more dreamy. <laughs> You know this this is where the, the the violinist plays sometimes at the tip of the bow. This this should be the the technical idea, and then the song will be also a little bit magic. Do you want to try this? Just this last. Yeah. yeah. Part. That's 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 that, that's the same. Well, you just started now. Be careful. It's also the theme in other key. Uh, what were... The high note in the theme, always with a little bit of vibrato. Yeah. No, you didn't like that. Good. So bravo. Absolutely gorgeous to see you, to hear you. Great playing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bravo, bravo. Share, share. Thank you, Professor Fenyu, and thank you, Shunming. Our next performer is fourth-year student Kim Mi Kang. She will play the first movement of Beethoven's Cello Sonata Number no. Four in C Major, Opus One Hundred Two, Number no. One. <laughs>
Good, good, bravo. Can you hear me? Yes, bravo. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, okay, fantastic. Yeah, very, very nice, very nice. You know, um, first question. Is it comfortable to start this piece here at the Frog Dombo? Or is it difficult? <laughs> oh, actually, I have to fit six notes in one bow. You have to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, no. I, you know, I ask this question many times because when you meet somebody and this, this person doesn't know what you do and you say, um, I play an instrument. And they ask, ah, so you, you, are you play on an instrument? What, what instrument do you play? And then you say, I play the cello. So the word playing is very, inter very interesting. And I think it means a lot. And it should be playing. It should be easy. It should not be, I'm suffering on the cello. I am not suffering. I'm playing the cello. And this is so important, I think, to understand that sometimes we have to understand the music differently to make it able to be playing and not suffering. That's why when you say you have to fit many, many notes under one bow, you can change the bow. But play the cello and don't suffer. I saw at the beginning when you started, you were preparing and again preparing and again preparing. This music should start out of no preparing. It should start like this. should be like music from heaven. And if you must prepare because you have to save the bow, because it's so many notes, it's something is not, not good. For the audience is not good. So I suggest and myself also I start up bow and change here to the G. Nobody would hear it. But it sounds so easier. You know also why? Not just to make it comfortable, but also because this is a sonata for Klavier und Violoncello. This is written in the music like this. Sonata für Piano and Cello. What does it mean for us? What, what do you think? The harmony is important. Yes, also. It's always important. Okay. I, my idea is, we don't know how cellists that time were playing the cello. We don't know this. But we know that Beethoven wanted to sound the cello a little bit more similar to the piano. And how the piano sounds, you press a key on the piano and the hammer hits the string. You know how this functions in the, in the inside of the piano. And this is the technique and this is the sound effect what we also should also um, uh, try to reach playing Beethoven. So it's never kind of too juicy, too soft, too uh, careful. It's always every note has a beginning, like a hammer hits a string. And this is also much easier to start in piano up here. Here, 
is is not is not so beautiful. Like starting with it. Please try once here. And don't come to the frog. Just until the middle. I think you feel much better already. I think you feel much better. But also, can the piano play vibrato? The instrument, piano, can play vibrato? No, not really. So the first note should not be a very clear. This is too much, yeah? Just start here. And this is this figure. These two high notes have always a dot. Play them really sh beautiful sounding, but a little bit shorter. Yeah, one more time. Also here, also here, every time, every time when you have a... The bow should leave a little bit the cello. Much better. I think the beginning is much, much nicer. Um, one, one thing about chamber music. Um, now the piano is playing the theme with you. the thing. So you go back a little bit and play softer, accompany. Still piano is playing the theme. Now you are important. Yeah, make make a little bit this this change of the roar. Sometimes you are solo, sometimes piano is solo. Can you start, please, from here? No, 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 no. The, the A, the A, the A is not important. This starts from the beginning. Don't, don't make an accent on the A. Play harmonics. Play, 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 play harmonics. I think in Chinese, harmonics is fine, fine. The word in Chinese, this. How, how in Chinese is? I know, but many people speak that Chinese. No? So anyway, play har, play uh, harmonics. Can be so good. One more time. Six. Yes, 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 yes. Shorter. 
Shorter, shorter, shorter these two notes. Wow, what are you? Yeah. Yes. Try to here. Sorry, can you try to slide slide up if you need to, but not you slide up and slide down. Don't slide it down. If you play it short, the second one, then you can come down and then, then you understand. Make it also a little kind of different between important, the first C is loud, important, young, and the second is here. Come from here to here, and it will be softer and beautiful. Don't pizza, don't play the pizzicato on the, on the same place. Yeah? And now it was good, this G with fourth finger, but this is also something what you have to think about i think it's much easier and now one note not not four it's a little thing but i think it makes life easier can you can you can you try it just from here just from here yeah Okay, <clears throat> so this, this, what you play now is great cello playing, is good sound, but Beethoven himself would, would not understand this. He would say, I'm sorry, but I wrote here a very clear rhythm. Why, why you play another rhythm? What I want to say, why Beethoven would say this, because that time, when we play Mozart, Beethoven, we have to be much, much more respectful to the rhythm. If we, this music would be from Tchaikovsky or Rachmaninoff or uh, Prokofiev or any kind of romantic, Dvorak, Schumann, then we could, we have the possibility to make the rhythm a little bit different because it's a romantic music. But this classical, Viennese classical music, we should be much, much more exact with the rhythm. I mean, it should be... <laughs> One bar goes into the next bar. Yeah? The bowing is also. Uh, there is the original bowing is like this. Now down, up, down, up. Yeah? Can, can you try it and try this bowing once? It's just very rhythmical. But why, 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 
why 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 you wait da ba 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 you don't need to wait there just play <laughs> Very good, much, much better, much better, much, much better at the beginning, much, much better. Just be careful that when you are ready with the first part, uh, you st stay a little bit softer. Maybe you play soft, maybe it's the microphone, I don't, I don't know. But uh, I hear the cello very loud in this place and the piano not so, not so good. So be softer and nervous. different rhythm. After the long E, for example, the B natural, you play it a little bit too short, for example. Yeah? J just from the D, uh, from the E. From here, can we start? Please, please don't do this. There is only one place in this movement when you can do this. This is in the development after. Um... This is the only place where, where you are allowed to to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Unfortunately this is not this is not because I like it like this, but we have to be respectful toward the for the time. In Beethoven time this kind of waiting and this is I, I don't think it's correct. I don't think it's correct. Yeah? Do one more time please. Um, the first note it's an eight. It's not it's not a sixteenth or a triplet. Be careful. The B natural. Say please. Just, just a second, just a second. I think I should start my, my browser um, new because now is is not together. I, let me try here. Better. Can you play two notes, please? Perfect. Yes. Now, now it's together. Picture and picture and sound. Okay. Um, note. Be careful. Last note is not that important. This one. The first is important. 
And then, if you watch carefully the music, you have only four. The beginning is fortissimo, and here at this, after this, you have only four. Is correct? Yes. So then, then play it also a little bit different, like the beginning. It's not so loud than the beginning. <laughs> Don't leave the F sharp dead like this. Make a little bit of vibrato and a little bit longer. And let the cello sound. The sound should come out of the cello. And after comes some sunshine. After comes beauty. Vibrate, vibrato the first note. And what happens now? We go to minore. We were in major, and now we go to minor. Play the minor a little bit softer. And now don't play loud, just very nervous. With a little, little accent. More accents. And what happens in this moment? After a long crescendo, you have forte piano. Which means, play softer from here. And from here you have a singer suddenly coming on the stage and singing. So don't play this too fast. Play slower. Make it, make it like you love somebody and say, Oh, I love you so much. If you love somebody, you don't say, oh, I love you so much. Enjoy this moment a little bit, yeah? So let's start one more time, same place. Long E. You change the bow in this last, in the third G, yes? It's much easier if, <laughs> if you play the first G, the second G, the and this, uh, the subito piano is just simply up, and then you don't need to change the bow. I think it's one note, right? The third G. Yeah, then do it like this. And second time, of course, it's the same. With the C, C, second C, and the third one should be on the D string abo, the subito piano. Yeah, it's the next page. You, you see the next page. Much, much, much better. Much better. You see this one place uh, written non ligato after the forte piano. Yes, non ligato. <laughs> try not, try not to play too, too staccato. Non legato, it means actually a little bit longer note separated. Yeah. It's a little bit like um, Paganini now. And also in... It's a little bit too short what you do. Can you start please from...
No crescendo, be careful. No crescendo. No. And play the last G up bow. Yeah. Now you started three times down bow. You understand? The third one is up. And no crescendo, just a little vibrato. And diminuendo. And then shocking, then hit the audience. But no crescendo before. This is Beethoven, crazy. Yeah? Can you start just from the... change the rhythm. If you want to wait with this F sharp, then play the E natural, which is the little note before the long F sharp. Play that later, but don't play it longer. What I mean is... Yes, you hear the difference. And just one thing about one place before, because it comes one more time. When you, we said uh, no crescendo, don't come to the frog here. If you go to the frog, the cello sounds louder and louder. Stay in the upper half of the bow, and then come in the air and hit this note. And the same you should do here now. Come back to the frog. You play. Can you try this? Can you try this, please? Just from the subito forte. Hear me now? Uh, yeah, now I can. Yeah. No, suddenly stopped everything. Suddenly everything stopped. But uh, how how much time do we have? Still. We have approximately five minutes left. Okay. Perfect. Very good. Very good. So we can we can uh, just these two little things. Um, um, now we have less dynamic. So don't come back to the frog. Mm -hmm. And again, less dynamic. So don't come back to the frog. 
finish here. And this note comes from there when you start. Yeah. <laughs> Forte piano, I think, or sforzato piano, this F sharp, yes? So make it quicker, go back to, to soft and very nervous. And not louder now. And again, hit the notes just a little bit at the beginning and then go, go, go away. Like electricity. Very nervous. Until but don't vibrate this note. Only two quarters before the A natural start the vibrato, please. It's very important because the harmonics, what you said before it's piano and cello, it's very important the harmonics. So here is, here is, for example, if you vibrate all the time and the piano is playing this chorale, that is not interesting with vibrato. Without vibrato, it would be interesting. It's very nervous music. At the end, come out. Just very clear rhythm how it's written. You know, I say sometimes that we are artists, we do whatever we want. But these guys, Beethoven, Brahms, Bach, Schumann, all, all of them, they were not idiots. They knew exactly what they want, what they want to hear. They wrote it down. So we should not change the rhythm too much, especially not in Beethoven. Yeah? So let, let's do just a um, development from. <laughs> Take back the ball the same day, like you remember. Go back to the to the front. Use another vibrato. <laughs> so this last note should not be too intense in vibrato. The next one, yeah, just from here.
why. Ah, now, now you are back. <laughs> now you are back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, it stopped at the last moment, at the last note. So I heard. Uh, I just, I was just wanting. I wanted to be sure that the entrance is. Yam pam pa. When you played the first time, it was not correct. You know, you were late, and then the second time a little bit too early. But now it was absolutely perfect and, and, and very good. Do you have one more question about this movement, or just basically generally uh, any anything you want to ask, or one more spot in this movement? Everything is good? Yeah. Everything is good. Okay, okay, okay. So, bravo. Bravo. It was great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so huge bravo to Miss Pianist for all the, all the three pieces. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Fenyu, Mi Kang, and Miss Lutia. With that, we have come to the end of today's masterclass. Our sincere thanks to Professor Laszlo Fenyu for being with us today and for sharing your expertise and musical insight with us. Thank you also to our students for this wonderful session of learning together. We hope that you've enjoyed your time with us today. Do join us again as our virtual masterclass series runs throughout the entire semester. You can view the conservatory's online performance season on our YouTube channel. For information about our upcoming events and other happenings here at YST, do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, have a good evening, thank you and goodbye.